Hey everyone, Christine here from Portable Entrepreneur. You know, being in this whole web design, SEO, digital marketing space is really fun and it's really rewarding to build a business around. At the same time, I realize that this is a business where you can get burnt out very easily. I've been there several times myself. And I remember back one of the times, this is really the worst time, where I was so close to just being fully burnt out, to just throwing in the towel and, and just giving up, even though I wanted more than anything to have this business. I didn't wanna go back and get a nine to five job. I didn't wanna to have to face the failure of not having made this business work. But I just couldn't seem to get all the pieces to work together. I had taken on a client where I knew, I knew in my gut that this was the wrong decision. I knew that she was the wrong one. But I so desperately at that time wanted a client. I so desperately just wanted some income coming into my business. So I knew it was working. So I was willing to take on this person who I knew just wasn't the right one, but I took her on and I was actually excited about it because I knew that she had this business and she had some new products that she was launching. Everything looked so good. And I knew I was going to be able to help take her to the next level. I was really excited about it, but it, our visions just didn't match. She was looking for someone to implement her vision, but I knew from my experience that her vision, without a doubt, was not going to help get her the outcome that she actually wanted. And you see, that's the difference in some of these clients. This client would not hear anything I said, had no interest in using me as the expert in what I wanted to do. She simply wanted me to do what she told me to do. And that really wasn't a match. And so that ended ended up being a situation where I had to let her go and it just was not going to work. Our visions were too different, even though I knew I could help her. She was just not open to that. And I found myself in a situation again where I took on a client where he was less than ideal, but nowhere near as bad as the last one. So I thought, okay, well, this could go better. Uh, but he brought in a lot of baggage from a previous person that he had hired to do the job and was taking all of that out on me and just uh, the bad experiences that he had had were pouring over into what we were trying to do and I just really didn't manage that well at that time and all the things that were happening from hiring someone and that really not going quite as I had wanted not because it was the person or it was me or my hiring process but really if I was bringing on the work that didn't work for me or my business and then trying to get some help on getting that done it was just such a mess and that's where I was really just starting to feel like I had no in control. I knew what I wanted in my business. I knew where I wanted to go, but yet I just didn't feel like I had control in getting that to happen. I felt like I couldn't seem no matter what I did to get those pieces to align. And I'm so thankful that I didn't give in to that and that I didn't give up because that really just would have changed the course of, of how my life is now. But what I don't want to see happen is for you to end up in a situation like that even if you're dealing with different clients or you're, you're frustrated with how things are going or that you're not progressing so that you don't throw in the towel either and that you figure out a way to get out of that. Because the longer we stay in that state of overwhelm and frustration and getting really close to being fully burnt out, the more likely that is to happen. So catching ourselves when we're going that way and being able to pull back and get ourselves out of that is really going to help. So I want to share with you some of the things that I found really helped me get out of being burnt out, uh, not just that time, but other times before that as well. And so how I was able to switch that into getting out of this place of overwhelm. You see, we, we tend to come at business like it is this huge, big, complex thing that we just can't possibly apply any simplicity to. And that couldn't really be farther from the truth. We can make business simple. And it's usually us that we're just putting too many things on ourselves that just make it feel bigger and heavier and harder than it needs to be. So one of the things that was really helpful for me was taking the time, just stepping back from all the busy work and the little tasks and the clients to just get intentional and not just intentional with my business. Like I wanted to figure out where did I want my business to go? What did I want it to look like? What did I not want it to look like? But also personally, what did I want from my life? What did I want to do with my life? Where did I want it to go? What lifestyle did I want to have? And how did my business really fit into that? 
we're really taught to kind of keep those personal life and the business life separate and have this whole work-life balance, but they really intermingle and we have to figure out a way to make them work together so that we're the happiest. And when we're happy personally, we're achieving our own personal goals and it's easier to find success in business as well because we're happy here and we're carrying over that motivation and that energy from our personal life. But we also have to let go of these stories that we're hearing from others, the stories that we're telling ourselves about how things have to go. You see, we see other people, let's say following a specific lead generation strategy or serving this type of business or offering this type of service or doing things this way or that way. So we start to feel like we have to do things the way we saw somebody else do them. But that doesn't relate back to our own personal goals or our intention for our business. So we have to stop taking in everything as the truth and the story about how things have to go and start defining our own story and really listening to ourselves and how we want our, our own business to go. So that way we're not creating a business that looks like everybody else's because everybody else is copying everybody else. We're creating a business with intention And it's going to be the business that is fun for you, that you enjoy, that you love being in. So that's what I really want for you. But you also don't have to do this business alone. And I say this for a couple of different reasons. One, you don't have to do this business alone and and you can connect with others who are going through this process like you. You can connect with others who have gotten farther ahead than you. And not because you need to compare yourself to them, but you need to draw from their experience, their knowledge, what they've been through, what's worked and what's not worked, to be able to see if any of that is able to tie in with the intention you've set for your business. But being able to do and and work in a business like this is fun, and it can be very isolating because you're likely at home, you're behind the computer all day. So being able to connect with others is is huge and not going through this alone. You can get so much farther ahead by being around others who are going through that journey just like you. But also I say this because you don't have to do all of the work yourself. If you're finding yourself in all this busy work, doing all these little tasks, and those tasks are keeping you from working on the intention you've set for your business. They're keeping you from working on the tasks that are gonna move your business forward, from the revenue generating tasks. Then consider hiring a virtual assistant. Consider hiring a developer. If you keep finding yourself on this five hour rabbit hole of trying to fix this simple WordPress error. So do something that is gonna help you be able to connect with others and do it in a way that's gonna help you support your business when you feel like you have to do everything. And because you have to do everything, you're not able to prioritize the way you want. It's easy to start getting really overwhelmed. Now, it's also very helpful to start your day with the most important task. And that's the task that's gonna help you reach your ultimate business goal. And if you don't start it with that, then you have to make sure that at some point during the day, no matter what, you're gonna make that task happen. You could get 50 little tasks done. And at the end of the day, if you don't get that one major task done, it's very easy to feel like you were completely unproductive. So then you feel overwhelmed and then you start losing motivation. That's where burnout can come in. So you wanna make sure that you are prioritizing that most important task that is going to get your business forward. Otherwise, you'll get into a social media, you'll get into your email, you'll start hearing from clients, and all of that has to do with other people's intention for your time and not your own intention. So you gotta be very, very careful with that and make sure you're balancing the client's needs, but you're also making sure that you're prioritizing your own business as well. Now, if you're anything like me, you may pile way too much on your plate and think that you can just do everything every day. So what I like to do, and this was hard for me, but I had to start doubling my deadlines. If I thought something was only gonna take one day, I'd give myself two. 
If I thought it was gonna take me a week, I'd give myself two weeks. And this could be with your client projects, this can be with whatever tasks you're working on to move your business forward, but give yourself more time to do the work than you actually think that you'll need. Because if you give yourself one day and you really needed three, because it just takes longer than you had anticipated or you underestimated the time, well, then that's where you start feeling overwhelmed, that's where you lose motivation, you start getting off track, and that is not really a good place to operate from in order to grow your business. So these are some of the things that really, really helped me. And I don't wanna give you a thousand ways to prevent burnout or to get out of that, because this isn't about coming up with all these different ways. This is how we make things too complex. We just gotta look for one or two little tweaks that we can do to step back and say, if business was simple, what would that look like? If I could make this process more simple, how would this look differently? And come at it from that standpoint. It will look very differently, it feels very differently, and you're able to just start simplifying things, block out all these shiny objects and what everyone else is doing, and concentrate on your intention for your life and for your business. So I hope this helps you think a little bit about burnout. Uh, I would love to hear in the comments below if you have any questions about burnout or getting out of these types of situations, or if you wanna share a situation that you've been in before when it comes to burnout. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you next time.